Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough. Welcome, welcome to another hobby hangout day. I got a few things going on. Um, basically, I'm trying to just kind of efficiently use my time as much as I can. And so down here on the downward cam, uh, make sure that works. I got my last 10 pig boys. Uh, I'm very excited about, and then here's one painted one from the last batch to kind of make sure they all match. So we got those. I'm just gonna be throwing down some contrasts. Uh, the scheme is incredibly simple with just different kinds of contrast green, uh, some very basic painting of the boars, and then pretty much going over it with grime and then building a few highlights. Um, in case anyone's curious, off to the left here, we have three little Dweg home guys from the game Conquest. As you can see, very different scale. They're much bigger. These are their dwarves and they're almost the size of orcs on pigs. Uh, and then we have this butte, who I love. It is my the child I never had or wanted, but here I is, and I love it. It is the Hell Hellbringer Drake. It is essentially a giant, think fire slayers, but if a magma droth had a massive cannon on either side, and two of these guys are like gunners, and then the third guy sits up there and points and is like, "Hey, let me hit them with my sword." So we got these things going on, obviously. To back home, need to be primed. I'm waiting on a good day to do that. <clears throat> but pig boys, we will at some point get to working on them. At the same time, whilst things are drawing, I'm actually going to switch over to the shared screen because the tournament prep, I guess, side of this whole thing is that I'm going to be doing making some like reminder cards for myself and my buddy Rob. Uh, we had a great game uh, this last Saturday. And I had an immense amount of fun and brought the bone splitters out again. And uh, I I did lose that game and, and Rob did awesome with his uh, his dragons and stuff. What we just realized is just we got to get our, our time down. Because it's one of those things that like if we were at an event, at the time that dice would have been called, I would have been winning. But two turns later, you know, um, not two turns, that's an exaggeration. But later on after that... We played the game to its like functional completion until I had a, a point where I literally could not take an objective back anymore. So we played it out to that point, and um, the Soul Blight Grave Lords took the win in that case. So it's just a matter of like, well, we gotta we gotta have a more uh, efficient resolution, I guess. It's kind of the thing, like just making sure you hit all the. The time markers that you want to be basically focused on so you're not falling too far behind. That's kind of where we're at. Let me grab. Oddly enough, the green contrast paint that I hate the most for flesh is for orc flesh is orc flesh. Um, for me, it's all about that plague bearer flesh. That's how you get that nice olivey green. I know some folks like the really, really dark green. Not for me. Let's see, where is my Militarum? Give me one second, everybody, I apologize. I know there's nothing more riveting in the history of radio than sitting and listening to a man search through his paint bin, but I assure you, it's worth it. Uh, if there's anyone who can hear and see me, please let me know if everything is working okay. I see that the Stream is going, but no one seems to be commenting, which is fine. Hey, hi, hello, everybody. Don't mean to interrupt you. Okay, but for real. Here we go. My goodness. <laughs> hmm. Have anything else I want to use? I can... I'm actually kind of curious. What's the difference between Orc Flesh and Warp Lightning Green? Let me look that up. Let's see what those two look like. Angry Hobbit and Scott, thank you guys. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, let's see. Paints. Where is that big bank of images? <laughs> okay, so it's a slightly brighter green. Which I'm actually... I'm actually okay with. Yeah, I found a... Uh, I'll share here. I found a picture for us. 
So you got Orc Flesh. Orc Flesh is the one, like I said, I'm not a fan of, but I wonder if it was a stronger green, if I might like it more. So I'm using Wraith Bone, so it would look like this. But those don't look dissimilar. I mean, hey, you know, I got the paint. Let's give it a try. I'll just do one or two, and if I don't like it, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, let me just adjust my light so I can actually see what I'm doing. Wooden bird, thank you, thank you. Everything is good. I appreciate that, friend. But yeah, like I said, boss and all the important characters are getting plague bear flesh. In fact, I'm probably going to do like 51% that and then the rest of it is something else in terms of uh, skin tones. I like when the, the orcs have like a, a good mix of greens. I know some some people like, like having a totally unified army, but I think that's one of the best parts about orcs is like... They just attract madmen from all over because they can move towards the biggest fight. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah, orcs from all over the place have different kinds of green. Let me ask this. How's everyone doing in the chat? What are we working on? Are we at work work? And if you're at home hobbying, what are you hobbying on? Um, as far as how my game went, yeah, uh, so I tried a different list. I found out recently that if I want to win the Underdog Award, specifically at this event I'm going to in May, uh, I can't take Kragnos. Can't have a god character. Like, basically it's underdogs but with no crutches kind of a thing. Um, which is, is, is cool. I'm, I'm happy with it thematically in terms of, like, you know, it's what the award is about. Um, as far as how I feel, so my last game, I, I didn't have Kragnos, and instead of taking, or proxying, I should say, a rogue idol, because I have a, a rogue idol being made by an awesome viewer here on the channel, instead of that, I was like, okay, well, what happens, just to see it, if I just stuff the list with boys, like, literally bodies, right, just more and more bone splitters, um, on paper, it's just so many wounds to chew through. Like, what does that actually seem like in play? And so I did have a lot of bodies on the table. Um, I had a unit of 20 more boys, which really did stay around longer than I thought they would. Um, I had, what, two units of five. Uh, what are they called? Boar Boy Maniacs, the more quote-unquote elite version of the Boar Boys. And a brick of ten and two bricks of five with the basic more boys. Uh, sorry, boar boys. I know they all sound the same. I apologize. Um, overall, I think the list just did not have punch. Like, the thing about Kragnos and what he brings to the faction is just... Just that get up in your face, punch, punch, punch. Um, the rend and the... The damage he can put out, that kind of stuff. He just also, I think part of it is just psychological of him being a colossal centerpiece model that like looks like a problem. <laughs> um, so you know, all the bodies and stuff like that, even that it calculated in. Yeah, the list just needs needs at least one or two options for higher damage uh, attacks and stuff. So. I do think the rogue idol is at least a necessary one. I've been thinking about a mega gargant. But we'll see. Because I like the bone splitters thing, because at least. You know, the rogue idol has a lot of soft benefits going for it. Like, because it has the bone splitters keyword, it counts towards. The number of units I can have go forward with Great Hunter. Um, I don't know if he still does, but he used to give some benefit to bravery. But which uh, I found out pretty big, pretty big uh, weakness for these guys. Hey, good souls. Hey, Spetia. Let's see, doing Imperial fists. Got some folks on lunch. Hey, hey. Are you painting to battle ready and not parade? Uh, 
Yes. I think. I don't know. I only. I don't have. I don't really deviate styles. I, I feel like I've just always painted the same level. <laughs> I don't really like uh, codify bad already and stuff like that. I mean, I do. I definitely do more work than the battle ready stuff on the games workshop sites. I'm not sure if I would necessarily call it parade standard. I don't know. Basically it's contrast, some effects and a few highlights, but yeah, that's a tough one to answer. It, I, I kind of do my own thing. <laughs> that makes it sound more original than it is, but it's just a unique way of painting like a derp really, really quickly, but still maintaining quality. <laughs> Um, Painting Cruel Boys, nice, nice, nice. Think I'm going to bust out my Black Templars tonight and build them, nice. I like it. Black Templars are a pretty cool. Um, get ready for work, but currently painting Sororitas, building Stormcast, right on. Yeah, I actually, uh, there was a local couple of guys playing 40k the other day, and I, you know, I've always obviously had a tangential interest in 40k as far as a game, it's another Games Workshop game, and I like a lot of the lore for the setting, but not necessarily the game itself. Anyway. All that to say, I was sitting and I watched two local guys play, and one of them was playing Sororitas. I had never actually seen them, like, on the table. And so, uh, they look pretty fun. I mean, I kind of like the, they don't have a lot of staying power, but it's cool. They looked very, very fun. Lots of, com like, it's kind of looked how I imagine Guard, honestly. In terms of having, like, um mixed arms or like you know tanks supporting infantry and that kind of stuff at least the way he was playing it See, Doug, what's the list you're running? Uh, I can get it here in just a second. Um, I was actually playing at a lot of points under. I was playing at 1910 because I couldn't figure out how to make a list work without a Kragnos proxy or I didn't have a base that was the size of the uh, Rogue Idol. So I was just, I was just like playing, playing down a few points. Uh, I think I was at 1910. Um... Yeah, I just had a bunch of as many pigs as I could put in there, and then two units of more boys. Yeah, they're squishy. Have to play them with a bit of finesse. They do have some hard hitting units, though. Yeah, that's what I kind of I've seen. Yeah, Joshua, work on some Tyranids. Sweet, you must be very, very excited. Doug paints to three foot fabulous. Yes, that's that is what I call it. Where it's just, you know, eh, put it down the tables, take a step back. It looks pretty good. No, oh, I think I'm actually pretty happy with these. The naked boys. 
it, you know, one of the challenges with this is that like I painted the original models so long ago. Like the, cause so this army, a uh, portion of it went to Jack from rerolling ones and then it, and then fell back to me, but there was a huge distance of time between those two events and so it's a lot like well I don't I mean I'm not one of those people who like keeps a journal of all their paint scheme stuff so it's like well let's get a reverse engineer the hell out of this <laughs> and I think it turned out pretty well that to me was always the the worry because you know you don't want to like, have like it's one thing for some models to clash because you wanted to paint, you know, different units, different colors. Like having a random Blood Angels unit in an army of Space Marines, kind of, it, or, or Ultramarines or whatever. That's one thing. But when it's like, the armies look different because I as a painter have grown leaps and bounds in that time. Yeah, that's a different kind of incongruous Um, we doing the Chad Bone Splitters army exactly. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can win if you feel like it. Uh. Um, is there an aspect of the hobby you do not enjoy? Yeah, absolutely. I despise model building. Do not like it. Um, uh, a buddy, Tyler Emerson, recently turned me on to the site Troll Trader. It's like, it's just like used miniatures. And uh, I was just like, oh, you mean I can pay less for it and it's already built? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I it just it always takes so much longer than I expect it will um, I've never completed a model and been like that was fun <laughs> like the build because the building is not the fun part I painted a model and thought that but not not building which is weird because like I do puzzles like my wife and I uh, in the evenings to chill out after stressful days like we'll do puzzles together but I don't have that same feeling that it's a puzzle when it's a model for some reason. I'm not sure why. I hate scraping wool lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Something great. Um, Troll Trader is good. How would they have to... How would they have to change the building side of things to engage me? Um, go backwards in time. I mean, like, honestly, I, I enjoyed building, like, the old school Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines where it was, like, legs... One piece of torso, a left arm, a right arm, and a head. You know, backpack, obviously. But, like, you know, you can pick out from among those bits what's the coolest. And I, I liked that aspect. But when you get into... I don't know. All of these things are locked. And now some of them, like, they have bespoke poses. And they're a pain in the butt to try and work with if you want to do anything other than having ten of the exact same... Even the big kits, I'm just like, I don't want to fiddle around with all this little accent stuff, like um, purity seals and that kind of... I was just like, oh my god, there's already so much going on with this model. That kind of thing. So I guess... 
and I know it's me, so like if that that's the whole question was to engage me, that's what they would have to do, but I also understand that we would miss out on some of the more stunning sculpts that we've seen. I get that. But for like line infantry when you're building 30 of a thing, reel it in, buddy. So less parts the better. Easy build kind of cater for that. Now, but see the easy build ones, you don't get a choice with things. That's the that's the downside there. Like I had no problem building my chariot, like the Stormcast one. That was a snap fit, basically. <laughs> Doesn't mean it was like there was any customization outside of that one weapon option. So it's not. I don't know. It's not about ease. It's about ease plus not losing the ability to customize things or, or come up with a really unique combination of arms and legs and stuff. Part of it though is like when I get done painting a squad of 20 models I feel very accomplished I'm like oh, all right these guys are like awesome for some reason when I get done building those 20 models I don't feel accomplished I'm like oh thank god now I can actually get to the, the part of the hobby <laughs> I feel like it's a chore that I have to do before I can do the part that is actually entertaining Also, just on a practical level, I, I love painting on stream. Uh, I can't build on stream very well. Like I've done it a few times here and there, it, but I, I tend to like really need to take my time reading the instructions and make sure I understand stuff. So like, it kind of interferes, whereas painting lends itself very, very simply to what I'm already got going on. But yeah. Actually been on the road all morning. I'm gonna pull up the community site. We got anything interesting today? We got a metal watch for 40k. Chaos Knights preview. Nope, 40k heavy week. It's gonna look like. It's odd how some kits feel like that, but some really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's different. It's different, you know, kit by kit. Like, I certainly, and you know, if it's a unit of, say, hmm, what's a good example? Uh, brutes, okay. A unit of brutes. I'm cool with them like having bespoke poses and stuff like that because there's five of them. Uh, there's not a ton, you know, if you put in like one or two weapon options or arm position options for them, you know, you can have enough on the table that don't look carbon copy -y, and I'm fine with that. But like when you talk like 60 grots, forget it. Make them all the same. <laughs> the whole point is they're a sea of bodies. Uh, I don't need every guy being its own little masterpiece. But that's a little different because part of that army of the spectacle is the numbers, right? The, the teeming masses of little dudes screaming.
Uh, new model Monday. Is that a thing? What did they preview today? All I see is an ad for uh, their next like campaign thing for 40k. Besides, we got squats. That means they've re they're they've officially reached the bottom of the creative barrel. There's no new models coming out. What are you talking about? Haven't you seen the internet in the last three days? It's all anybody says. <laughs> I'm so happy that people that want them are getting them, but I do not carry that uh, particular nostalgia for squats. kind of feel the same way about Tomb Kings. Um, had a dream a few weeks ago where I had an army of grots with red robes tempted to make it happen. That could be cool. One of my favorite um, pictures that I've seen from like Games Workshop art is uh, somebody painted in their studio painted a plague monk army, like the clan's pestilence army, and did it all with these really awesome dirty yellow robes. And I have always thought that that looked incredible. Now. If I ever pick up another Plague Monk, my soul will break and um, I will be cast into the void because I have built and painted so many of those things already. But uh, it's a cool idea. It looked amazing. I like unusual color combinations, especially when they're all hooded. Like it just makes it seem menacing. This is all these little guys just squirrel on their way towards you, be it Grot or Skaven. Uh, it was a Blood Bowl star player. Okay. Oh, I, I, okay. That's fine. I'm. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna bother to uh, to to look it up. I even have the website pulled up. Uh, that's how that's how strong my interest is in in Blood Bowl. But thank you. Okay. I um let's see. That's why I'm tempted to go and von Gori Soul Blights painted twenty skeletons, I'm not sure I want to do more. Zombie dragons for days. Yeah, I get that. My uh my buddy uh, Rob locally, he is doing uh, Castellai. We give the um, Blood Knights as battle line for that reason. Yeah, it's just kind of a more elite force. And I like them. They are definitely a unique style of play. We were actually talking about that. He had one sad. Oh, it was, he was just a sad panda. Uh, like he failed, I think, three, like five inch charges in a row or something. I mean, it was like, it was abnormal <laughs> um he was all set up for a great charge round and then absolutely got none of them um which it just happens sometimes dice happens overall i would say the game he it was very much in his favor but it was just seeing seeing your your nasty blood knight units just sit there you're like ah. but luckily i think i think that round he got the double turn so, the, you know, all I did was delay my suffering for, like, a bit. <laughs> my sister wanted me to teach my niece chess. I taught her Blood Bowl instead, having a lot more fun. Oh, yeah, how could you not?
Okay, I'm just going to throw the green on these two, and because I, I like to let contrast paints dry quite a bit before I do anything else with them, we'll uh, switch over and we'll work on some tournament prep stuff. Ooh, that is green. That is, I'm going to say, shockingly green. Uh, for those of you who tuned in later and missed my indecision, I like to just kind of lay down some base colors with various contrast paints. And I like to do different kinds of greens for my orcs because bone splitters kind of come from all over the place. They kind of just trickle into wherever the nearest Wargog Prophet is. So I wanted to have a little bit of skin variety. Um, and my least favorite orc skin color is actually orc flesh from the contrast paint line. So I was like, I want to see how warp lightning looks, which is what this is, what you're seeing right now. And so I'm going to do one with warp lightning, and I will do one with orc flesh because even if it's not my favorite color to paint, overall when you step back and look at the unit, it's a nice little pop of a darker green compared to the more olive color that I usually go for. But it'll give me a chance to see Warp Lightning and Orc Flesh back to back. Um, eventually I have to build a Daughters of Cain army for my wife. She doesn't want to build herself, but she's deciding she actually wants to play. That's awesome. Yeah, man, it's just, it's just a lot. I find building to be a lot. I understand it's not for everybody, but I think part of it is also just, it seems like a mental chore. Because I can't, you can't, I can't build and do anything else. Like, I have to, like, keep my eyes so I don't cut my finger off with a sharp tool or anything like that. Because I would never hear the end of it. Um, yeah. Or I could just go play historical games like uh, Blood and Plunder where they're all metal models and you don't have to build a single thing. Yes. Okay, so there's... Exacto Blades can't build character. <laughs> Okay, so we got warp lightning flesh there. We got orc flesh here. Pretty similar. Davis MMA, what's up, buddy? Hmm. Not sure how well the difference in these two colors is going to show up for you on my camera, but interesting. Uh, Davis, what are you working on? Or are you working on anything? Like I said, we're gonna finish up these. This guy, he's the last one of the unit. And then move over to some tournament prep. I'm gonna be uh, making myself and my friend Rob some battle tactics cards. I got Wahop uh, Wahopedia pulled up, so I have the rules. I'm just literally going to straight copy paste, add some art, and make them into magic cards so that we can very, very quickly and easily sort through them.
That was, so uh, we've mostly played narrative play stuff, but the, the whole like stopping being like, okay, what's my battle tactic? That kind of stuff is, has kind of been, well, it's been a new to learn. Cause you know, Path of Glory, you don't do any of that. There's no, there's no battle tactics or anything. So it is very, very interesting. And my first event of third was Holy Havoc, and uh, essentially they have battle tactics built into their own missions that have to do with the terrain on the table, so still didn't engage with them there, even though I was playing match play, like, list building. All said and done, they kind of look identical, if I'm honest with you. So again, that is Warp Lightning and Orc Flesh. I would expect the Orc Flesh to be darker, but when you put it on the actual Wraith Bone, it doesn't look that much darker. Whatever. Just listening while uh, painting a house. Oh, right on! I find that building a centerpiece model can be fun. Building 10 Ard Boys just isn't. <laughs> no, I understood painting the house. That's right on. Cool, like the Beastmen. All right, let me go over here to... card maker there we go let's do this we'll hang out together and do some nerdy stuff okay name let's see what we have here Wahapedia. broken ranks uh yeah we'll keep it as white let's find some fun pictures um, let me see. Do I have a tab open already for this? Let's see. Gur Art. Give me a just a moment. Okay, upload. Let's see if this will work. I don't actually know. Yay, nay, did it. Okay. Subtype, we're gonna go. This is a battle tactic. Just take this. Yeah, okay, a monster. Hey, look at that. Okay. Okay. So we need to be locked in. Can we just do that? Sweet, we can. Let me get a. Uh, let me get a folder here. And like I said, we're just going to be hanging out today. K 
getting ourselves some hopefully cool looking cards to be able to uh, actually learn this game well. Where is my thing of Gur art? Here we go. I think you mentioned you're in Wisconsin before. I'm in Iowa. I'm currently looking at a state line and wonder if you know anything good leagues or clubs at the state line. I don't know. I'm I'm uh, on the east side of Iowa, I think. Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area. So not, not quite there. If you'll excuse me, I'm just grabbing a whole bunch of images to use as interesting backgrounds. Hopefully they all work out. The Bug Eater GT in June. Might have to check that one out. I've heard of the Bug Eater. I can't think of what what podcast or whatever I've heard that in? Okay, cool. Okay, I got a bunch. Apologies for that off screen, no funness. So let's get back to this. We got our card. Yep, I got that saved. Sweet. So that was Broken Ranks. What's the next one? Conquer. Still a battle tactic. Let's grab Conquer. And let's go. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, one of our biggest Omaha. Yeah, so um, is it is it meant to be a, a very competitive event? I'm just curious. I don't know anything about it. Um, but would love to. Choose file. Let's see where I did that one. Let's go. But yes, I'd be interested in going. I mean, um, I think I have like family over there too. That might be a good thing to like just go hang out for the the week. I think I believe my in-laws are out that way. I mean, I think they're in Lincoln, but I think the AOS stuff is mildly competitive. I think they're more ranged to narrative type missions. At least in my experience, the last time I joined them, have done drop zone the past few times I went. Oh, right on. How is drop zone? I have heard very, very mixed things about it. Because that's uh, that's the one that's like very, very small scale, right? I um, was recently looking at uh, 
some of the other games that they they put out it's just like i just i'm not sure i see not the appeal that's not right because i understand why it's cool it's a big old scale difference Do not work. Upload. There we go. Aggressive expansion. I enjoy it. it's ten millimeter game with alternating activations, but done in battle groups, so it's not your whole army. Oh, okay. I tend to prefer alternating activations. It at least helps with the whole, like, an army not just being blown off the board before it has a chance to do anything meaningful. think this is then if not an image oh it's a web file Two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. I don't think I've done that one yet. You can all go away. So, do you just print these out and laminate them? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of our plan. Um, just as little reminder things. That's all. It's just game aids. Trying to reduce the number of books I actually have to go through for things. Yeah, again, must be an image. What do you think? Okay. I would be um, curious, uh, Josh, if you have played Conquest. And the reason I suggest it is uh, it also has alternating activations. It has some aspect of battle groups to it. And then, I don't know. I just, I like their, their system quite a bit. All right, so I need like one more picture for some of these. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. What do I got, one more? Seven, yep, one more. Okay, let me grab a piece of art here, I apologize. Kind of burned out on fantasy. I get that. I can I can very much respect that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, um, for me, I don't know. I, I have been more interested in different ways to take on games. I've just, man, lately it's been a real, it's been a rough time online. Can we all agree with that? The vitriol and the way that stuff went down for many of the, uh, Uh, Adepticon guys and that whole fiasco. It's just it was just exhausting to be like, man, this sucks. Just kind of seems like nobody was happy or wanted to be. Boom! There we have some fun little. Oh, you can make Pokemon. What do the Pokemon cards look like? Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Wow, make some cards. I like it. <laughs> and what do you got? Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, they're also nice because they have a nice big old gap of space right there to be able to write in. But I feel like it's more picture heavy. Um, Bear Wizard not to stir the pot, but what happened with the Adepticon? Oh yeah, so... We can come back here downstairs to uh, talk and paint and stuff. No, 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 I'm not gonna stir the pot either. So basically, uh, okay, let me get my stuff. Let me get myself settled in and I will go into story time mode, Doug. Let me grab, I just need a skin paint. Okay, so here's here's the the super way oversimplified version. Um, it started off with people not being super stoked about the review or the reveals that came out. Uh, there was just a lot of I, I'm gonna call it uh, complaining. Other people have used other words <laughs> regarding uh, just they weren't very happy with the AOS stuff that was previewed because uh, they didn't see the value in the Thondia book or the terrain. It is what it is. You know, that's a personal preference. I, for one, thought it was pretty cool. But whatever. And then, so that, uh, there were already people who were kind of in a sour mood is kind of what I'm getting at. So what happens with the event? If you don't know, Adepticon doesn't use um, ITC, which is sort of like a standardized tournament format. Um... And really what it comes down to is they just they have different ways of scoring. I, if my understanding, and like I said, I'm not a tournament player, I don't know. My understanding is that the Adepticon stuff really leans more into the hobby in terms of giving you points for those kinds of things. Completing games is rewarded. Um, and yes, so they do their own thing, uh, which some people don't like, but they make the argument that gaming should be varied and when you go to different events they should be different that kind of stuff well uh there was a counting mix-up i don't know the details of it there was a, an accounting mix-up where essentially they announced uh one player uh her name was emma as best overall i think please correct me if i'm wrong if i got the wrong award uh, but my understanding it was best overall. But because there was a, an accidental miscalculation of battle points, she in fact was not best overall. She was it was another person who I think was in third got bumped up or maybe second bumped up to first, and uh, it, it just created a lot of bad blood because not only was Adepticon not playing by the standards of all the people who love to cover these games in very much detail, like competitive commentators. Uh, you know, it kind of wrinkles the feather when the lists aren't released the same way as they would if they were using, say, Best Coast Pairings and ITC. There was a lot of tension there, and then to have such a, uh, a public mistake with a uh, person who won, you know, Best Overall uh, was a big deal. And all the players involved were very, very vocal online. That's another thing. So when you talk about what happened, well, a lot of people said a lot of things on the internet. <laughs> at the end of the day 
And so there was just a lot of uh, negativity and bad blood regarding the reasons why the event is different and, and, and wants to be its own thing. But then also seeing the drawbacks of that is that if you do your own thing and it's not all computer calculated by the exact same formula as everyone else, there's room for error. And error happened. And yeah. So that's the skinny of it. How about that? Someone please correct me if I am uh, if I got any details wrong. I will highlight it here because I want to be honest. But so here's the thing, that sucks. It's it's life, you know. People make mistakes. I'm sure that guy feels bad. Do we actually know who it is? He posted about it on Twitter. No no doubt that he is remorseful. It was a mistake. It happens. Um, however, since then, I have been. Uh, just randomly for very different reasons and for different games and conventions I've actually ended up talking to three people who were volunteer tournament organizers for that event and these are people who had nothing to do with the calculation problem they were just walking around and if folks had rules questions they would call a TO over you know there's almost 200 gamers so you know rules of questions happen and so these are people who had nothing to do with the accident but were part of the event and uh, one of them shared with me uh, four, I think, emails that he got of just calling him every sorts of terrible name. You motherfucker who ruined this hobby. You're the reason all these things. Just It was just a dude walking around answering rules questions. So it's just, it was a lightning rod moment and a lot of, uh, I'm going to say, overreaction. I think that's, you know, when it gets to the level of you're assaulting people who did, didn't have anything wrong with the problem. That's... No. Um, all that to say, it also does suck to, you know, I'm sure it was a gutting feeling to be named best overall to go back home and find out. I don't know. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes are all around. It's how people communicate. All that stuff. So it's just, we got to see the some of the worst in people. My personal opinion, as much sympathy as I can have, um, you know, I know that I would be, you know, I'm, I'm painting these guys up for the underdog award. How sad would I be if I got home and then there was an email waiting for me? It's like, actually, Doug, you didn't win that. It would suck. It would really, really suck. Um, sure as hell wouldn't send like, not threats, that's not the right word, but you know, I wouldn't heart wish any ill will. It's just... It just sucks. They, they're... they Okay, give me a free pass for next year. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> oh, man. I, I guess at the end of the day, when I think about events, it's really what you come, come there for. Um, for me, when I go to an event, you know, let's say it's a, it's a one-day event, right? Three games. When I pay my... 10, 15, whatever it takes to get into the event. The only thing I'm buying is a chance to play that many games in a day. You know, if I go to an Adepticon tournament, whether I'm at the narrative thing or, you know, the doubles event or whatever, the big competitive one, I give you money, you give me five games. That's the only contract that there is. Um, in that regard, everyone still got exactly what they paid for. And... You know, because I mean, like, nobody who paid entry into that wanted a game and couldn't have one. No, they got what they paid for. And uh, of the 100 and I think it was 89 total folks who went, 180 cent of seven of them didn't have a problem. And so it's one of those things, like, was it a mess up? Oh, yeah. It was a big screw up. Should people be mad? Uh, a handful of them have the right to be mad. Are they the villains of the AOS world? No, that's the dumbest idea possible. <laughs> it's just a bunch of volunteers who wanted everyone to have a good weekend and mistakes were made. So. Considering first place gets flights and accommodations paid for to the final. Yes, yeah, so I, I do understand that there was a monetary element. Um, it's just it gets so weedy because I also don't like that in events. 
But um, to, to put a pin on that, Games Workshop did extend the offer to uh, Emma, who was the one who was initially awarded it, got excited, and then was taken away. So, you know, at, at least Games Workshop stepped in and tried to make sure that no one had an overall sour uh, experience based on that. But I do understand that because there were prizes involved, you know, things jump up a notch. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, but you know, that's that's a fantastic, thank you, Maleficent Ruler, for, for pointing that out. I mean, there, there, because there are things on the line, there are absolutely reasons that you're like, oh yeah, like she has a reason to be livid, and you know, I don't think anyone was really arguing that. It's It's not about her, it was about the community's reaction to this group of people who just just wanted to put on an event but we build these things up into such you know massive things like oh my god adepticon that's a big event so is uh what las vegas open is a big competitive one you know it's last year was the worst year for the grammys because will smith didn't slap anyone and you know what it still dwarfed any form of attendance of Adepticon or <laughs> any of those events, so it's like a little perspective is necessary, I think, but I understand. That's why I don't I don't really care for those levels of prize support. I'm I hope that there was one very smart employee at Games Workshop who was like, yeah, we need to carve out space in the budget just in case something like this happens, but yeah, I don't know. Like, someone who could have seen ahead to, like, yeah, this this can raise those potential problems. Absolutely. I bet the hate mail came from people who weren't even at the event. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I don't know. I can't I can't say on that. That's, that's, we're getting into speculation territory, and that's where I do my most self-destructive work. Um... You know, I don't know, but everyone I've talked to who was actually there said, like, it was, everyone had a great time. I understand that crappy things happened. But, it works both ways, because, you know, I w was talking about how excited I was to hear about the e event results, uh, mostly from the narrative games. Like, Adepticon itself is not the, the tournament for competitive play. There's a lot of events going on. And I was chatting about, you know, uh, how cool it was to see different things going on at the narrative, which you should check it out. Um, the gibbering dome is what they call it. And um, someone left a comment in my video. It's like, well, you can't, we can't say nice things about Adepticon anymore. Was essentially the idea. I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, so much more than that. So much more than just an hi a hiccup at one one event. See, Joshua kind of reminds me of why I left 40k years ago when this guy had a meltdown at a tournament about going undefeated but lost due to sportsmanship. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, um, okay, wait, was it one of those things? Because I've, I've been to events that do this that like you can play multiple games and get negative feedback results from your opponents, but what that means is you can't win anything. So, like, was it a situation where all of his games were perfect, technically speaking, but because he was a dick, nobody wanted to give him the favorite player vote or whatever? <laughs> First of all, I love that. There's nothing better than that.
And, you know, man, it's tough, because at the same time as all that's going on, I'm trying to explain to my buddy here locally, Rob, who's who's just getting into the hobby and uh, wants to go to the event with me, uh, Vault Wars, where I'm bringing these guys out. And it, it's so hard to explain, like, the over overwhelming majority of hobbyists, even competitive ones who go to events, you will never have a problem with. If you accidentally knock a model over, no one's like standing there like a hawk, be like, um, judge, this guy's cheating. Like, no, we can just shit. Just pick up your model. Apologies, I occur something line I didn't mean to. <laughs> Try to keep the channel rather G, but uh, sometimes with that stuff, you know, it's just these online anxiety expectations we build up for ourselves and it's like oh man the overwhelming like it's just people are just really cool because dang near everybody who paid for that event just just wanted five games to go home to their you know significant other and probably children and just have had a good time that's it In the worlds of Will Wheaton, don't be a dick. Uh, let's see. Lance. Hey Doug, what do you use to support minis with the spindly legs? You say, uh, you say spindly, do you see a model here that's spindly? Or do you just mean in general? Um, there's a few things you can do. Like I remember some War Machine and Horde models I had that were terrible, the convergence of Cirrus models. I went out to my yard and I got some rocks <laughs> um, and just, you know, had them, instead of just having one high heel on the ground, I could actually, like, have the other leg, you know, on a rock or something like that, so it just added stability. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, anything that strengthens the connection, even if you were to say, like, you had their foot on the ground and you put a rock at the base of their foot, so like it was up against the side of the foot and flat on the ground, it would actually like help that hinge point. I mean, in general. Um, yeah, I mean, pinning them is a thing that I, I would suggest, but I only recently started doing it, so I, I can't tell you how. <laughs> if you have any follow-up questions to that suggestion, I'm, I'm in the lurch. <laughs> Uh, the tournament points are separated into victory points, sportsmanship, and painting evenly, so you have to score pretty bad in one to get dropped. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I like it. He just tanked so hard in sportsmanship that the other, the other two weren't enough to carry him. Man. <laughs> You know, I can't, I can't tell you that's a great way to run an event. I don't know the various ways to run events, but it's a great way to like give somebody an actual tangible scorecard of like, you are an ass. <laughs> you're good at this. You're good at this. And you failed as a human being, which means you can't win anything. <laughs> oh, it turns out that was the most important thing. What a, what a great, um, I guess, report card as an adult is kind of the equivalent I'm thinking of. Instead of math and science, it's like gameplay, ability to communicate, empathy. They win a needed lesson. There you go. Isn't that what it's all about at the end of the day? Winning, but maybe a lesson, a life lesson. <laughs> um, with your tournament list, do you want to go first or second in the round? I want to go first. I'll actually pull it up for you here. Um, and I'll give credit to where it's due. Let's 
So if you follow me over to the interwebs here, um, it's a blog called Plastic Crake um, and Shirt Rippers Guide. I think these guys are all in the UK. I, I know nothing about the, the channel, the blog, nothing. So if it's like, you know, the rest of it's hiding Nazi memorabilia, I don't know. But this one page is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was intended to be a joke. We'll see if it's turned out to be right. Uh, basically explains the Bone Splitters faction up top of like kind of how they're perceived in the new book and then sort of what they're good at, along with a bunch of fun jokes. He explains the way the faction works from a rules perspective, like its allegiance abilities and stuff. But on the very bottom, he has some list suggestions. Here and here and here. Yeah, here we go. So this is the list I'm doing. Now, I like I said, I was going to try putting Kragnos in here. Um, but yeah, so it all comes down to being two drops. Uh, can't have Kragnos, but I am going to have a Rogue Idol, which you can see at the bottom with Behemoths. And, and really what the idea is, go first, come in with less points so I get a free uh, Triumph. Because I this list is going to want that Battleshock immunity one. Um, so yeah, this is a two-drop army. Pre-game, they get a, an eight-inch move. Up to half your units can move eight inches. So you move all the pigs forward, meaning they're guaranteed a charge round one. Um, because typically you start, what is it, 22 inches apart from one another. Uh, you get an eight-inch pre-game move. They move 12 naturally. It's two inches. So we can make this happen. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where we're at in terms of that. Sorry, I just saw a light flicker on the YouTube end, so it was being weird. Um, yeah. It's just, you basically the idea is you shove so much beef up your opponent's nose, round one. And behind that immediately are the smaller units, the units of five boar boys, who are just meant to kind of like act as a second wall. And the threats that are in this list are the Wargog Prophet has a once per game laser beam eye ability that can take down Lords of Change, massive units, all these kinds of things, but he'll probably die after that. There's a block of four savage big bosses and they're interesting. This is actually something that really caught my opponent by surprise uh, on Saturday. So people have gotten more and more used to the idea of heroes. Like when this hero is done, you can pick one, you know, battle line summonable unit within 12 and they get to attack. Well, the thing with the Savage Big Boss is he has that rule. However, it's not limited in any way. And when I say in any way, what I mean is if he starts, there's no end to the chain. So you could have Big boss, activate, attack. He gets to pick another unit, which happens to be another big boss who gets to attack, which picks another unit, happens to be another big boss. And so this unit of four big bosses can become a nasty blender because they are the main source of rend and multi-damage in the list. They can chain each other. But also it doesn't say anything about battle line or behemoth or anything. So when that chain's done, they still pick a unit. It's just bone splitters. Everything in the list has bone splitters, even the rogue idol. So you could just kind of use them as a unit if you want to, or to throw off kind of the flow of battle other elsewhere. Um, so yeah, I get the big boss, big squad of big bosses, the Wurgog prophet, the rogue idol, and then just the sheer amount of wounds that all those dudes can get up in your face. <laughs> So, um, in my experience, like, I have most of this list built. I'm still missing a Rogue Idol and two Savage Big Bosses for my collection to be able to run it exactly. Um, my experience is there is nothing in the game more fun than a unit of ten Boar Boys. Like, they just, they get stuck in when you're Ice Bone. They have Exploding Sixes as well as uh, Mortal Wounds on a Wound Roll of a Six. Do the Boar Boys protect the idol in this list? Um, so the Maniacs and the Boar Boys, the 10-man Boar Boys, rather, these two blocks of 10 cavalry, their whole job is to just rush forward and pin your opponent in their deployment zone. The other ones, um, whether it be the Boar Boys 
uh, five mans, whatever. Everything else, round one, is going to be spread out to protect myself from my opponent being able to drop a unit anywhere meaningful within nine inches. And so they're pinned in their deployment. There's no good places to redeploy or, you know, come out of the sky, up from the grave, whatever you want to call it. And then beyond that, it's just whatever gets through that huge meat wall. That's what the rogue idol, the big stabbers are going for. So, yeah. Taking a lunch break and working on the rogue idol right now. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey everyone, this is the uh, the man who's who's making it all happen. The myth, the legend himself. Okay, we're gonna paint some pigs. Sweet. Okay. I'm kind of organizing them into the different colors that I want. So that's basically the list. Um, and the reason I like it more, quite frankly, than my Stormcast at this moment is because it just, there's so much more movement involved. Like my Stormcast, when they would come down, they really wouldn't move much after that. They're obviously not very fast unless you're doing Paladors or something like that. But with these, you get massive bricks of dudes. Pre-game movement, charge turn one most of the time. Um, yeah. Oh, man, they're just nasty. There's just so much fun. I mean, they die. Like, essentially what happens is I control the board round one, possibly round two. Um, but like when I game with Rob, the minute I lose that inertia, like the blood knights get to counter charge in or something like that it evaporates like a glass of water in the sahara man it's just gone <laughs> and when that when that snowball starts uh there's no way to reverse it because they don't have any kind of you know bring anybody back from the dead or anything like that so you know they got they got their own set of downsides as well But in terms of just, you know, getting out there, having fun, rolling dice, they're hard to beat right now, in my opinion. Give me just a minute. I'm just grabbing some of my grays. We can come back here to the paint center. We got a gray. Sweet. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm I'm looking at list-wise. So to get the award that I'm going for, because that's another thing to consider as I'm not just going to like try to win the event with Bone Splitters. Good lord, I do not see that happening anytime soon. Um, but the the uh, to win the Underdog Award, the only restrictions that I know of so far is you can't have a deity level character in your list, so no Kragnos. I have to win um, at least two games to be considered. That's a big deal. I gotta win two games, which I feel like is very doable. Um, once you win your, your two games, then it's just a matter of, okay, amongst those people, so who don't have crack, who don't have a god tier character and you're on the underdog list, amongst those people who has the most uh, battle points. So as long as I can pull two W's and just really, really, really keep an eye on, you know, even if I don't win the game, making sure I am able to get my battle tactics and stuff, um, I think I think I'm in a pretty good spot. I honestly just don't. I think <laughs> uh, excluding Kragnos is kind of takes away a lot of the competition that I had for that specific award. Meaning, like, 
I think in any other case, there would be a whole bunch of Gloomspite players, because Gloomspite and Kragnos are uh, a match made in heaven, from what I understand. But uh, obviously, they're not in contention with that if Craggy, or I like to call him Special K, that's my favorite nickname for him, can't be there. Okay, mustache. See you, see ya. Have a wonderful day. I think I should be able to win too. I mean, if nothing else, like, you know, it's their first year at doing Vault Wars over in Springfield, so. Obviously, I don't know what the floor looks like, but hopefully, you know, I can... I'll grudge match someone like Tom Lyons, who's going to throw me in a dumpster real fast with, I don't know, whatever thing he's got going on. Um, okay, the model next to your orcs, is that the Dweg Home Dragon Unit from Conquest? It is, Bio, I can show it off here. I showed it off at the, the top of the stream, but I will happily do it again. Um, speaking of Conquest, uh, a good, good friend, Wiley, um, just recently started doing an Every Other Sunday event uh, for Conquest here locally, and I could not be more excited. It's a little store downtown Iowa City and uh, so if you're in the greater Midwest area and you want to come hang out for a day and get some conquest in hit me up um, so I wasn't I was sadly was not able to stay yesterday uh, the entire times I had to step out and grab something from my wife but um, I'm very excited to have, because that's the thing, like, I think all but three of the games I've played of Conquest have been, like, TTS, and it's just, it just is not the same. I can't get excited. I find Conquest TTS to be so much simpler than than the AOS one, which I think is a nightmare. Um, just just because the, of the way unit movements work, like where you have blocks of troops and rank and flank and that kind of thing versus the minutia of individual models. But yeah. How did you find building that model? Heard a lot of horror stories about it. Bad fits, needs green stuff. Oh. Really? I did not have a problem with it. The only issue I ran into is that they didn't um, do a very good job of labeling the can insides. So like... Oh, man show you here so if you look at this side oh, actually I'll flip it if you look over here you see this little nub well this is supposed to be the inside of this part but it wasn't clearly marked or anything like that so I accidentally built it with two nubbins facing outside and I was like oh, that seems weird but I mean that's my mistake and I just glued on the other cannon without the little nubbin thing and I had no problem I'm surprised people had problems with that. That's interesting. I'll check that out. Because I'm, I'm going to do like a unit review video for it, and so that's helpful. I can be like, yo, dogs. <laughs> but no, actually, I mean, it's... What, its legs were each three pieces. The torso was two. It was just two halves that snap right together. Although I have I have learned over time, Parabellum models, um, the models are terrific. Like they just are. I, I I think they give Games Workshop a run for their money in many cases. But their instructions, 
not as cut and dry. Um, so for the most part, I've learned to like do dry fits and that kind of stuff. I just didn't see the little nubbin on there, so. Um, I saw your clip of Warhammer TV of the Nurgle cartoon. I was actually surprised how gory it was. It made me think. Is 40k aimed at older generations and AOS is a bit tamer? Well, I'm not part of the marketing team. I can't say as much. I mean, I think Games Workshop overall has evolved because AOS has gotten darker since when it first came out. Um... I don't know, but that's the thing. They can make 40k and AOS are great, and that they can be as goofy or as serious as anyone wants them to be. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Let's grab a gray. Uh, so I don't know. I I feel like. Sometimes they make 40k sort of goofy sometimes, you know, like with the squat preview or whatever, and sometimes AOS is goofy. It's just whatever it seems they want to do that day. <laughs> Rhyme or reason need not apply. Um, the Apex Predator makes me want to build a Wadroon army. I saw one fully assembled for the first time yesterday. They are gorgeous and big and sexy. They uh, So if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, the game Conquest by Parabellum, their models are at a very big scale like um my dwarves the the dwegholm as they call them uh stand almost as tall as a stormcast in some cases so like that's their that's their tiny guys now this is griff charger gray on this one and while i do like it i want it to be special because it almost looks like a great like white a white boar. If I did a highlight with whites, it would look really, really great. And I did it on the boss one, so perfect. Um, I remember, uh, sorry, I remember having trouble cutting out the arrows for my marksman clones for my spire. So in the end, I left them out. Oh, bummer. Is it okay if I bring up some of the last Marvel stream? Oh yeah, go for it. You had a question? Yes, Warren, you're correct. Exactly, yep. That's what I mean by they're, they're kind of as scary as whatever writer needs them to be because the Gloom Spite book is a perfect example of that. Here's the, the goofy, wacky, oh, look, it's the Loom King. And then you read their book and you're like, oh, F, bro. I was looking for a, a magical time of creativity and wonder. Gloomspite gets are terrifying. <laughs> like the actual thought of it. Um, bio, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I do know, um, there's what I'm going to call first gen and second gen Parabellum kits. So if you look at like the arc of how Games Workshop's kits have improved in quality, and it could be in detail quality, it could be in build quality, you know, quality is a big word. It could be a lot of different things that go into different kits. Um, the rate at which Parabellum is 
learning and improving their kits, I think far outpaces Games Workshop. It's not that their models are technically better. It's literally the rate at which like they've started so much later than Games Workshop. Parabellum's only been around for like two, three years, something like that. And have already reached an incredible level of detail and production quality. And it's just like, how'd you guys figure this crap out so fast? Like, deck gum. And then you have some other, you know, game manufacturers that like the models are great, but they don't they can't produce them in the same size, quantity, anything like that. Um, okay, T4 was here. Let's help, Hawk and Widow. I don't think I understand. I don't, I, uh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant like, uh, rules questions about the stuff I was talking about. I don't. I don't know hardly anything about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Never saw in game. Nothing like that. Sorry, I thought you were going to ask about a model I was painting. <laughs> I didn't mean to invite your question and be like, nah. color do I prime Stormcast? So for my um, Knights Excelsior, the, the white armored ones, I do Wraithbone and then Apothecary White immediately over top of that. Um, oh, Darwin. Okay, I'll check that out in just a second. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it. Keep it real simple. Uh, Darwin Green 5. Have ever looked at indie games like Turnip 28 or Sludge? Turnip 28, I love the artwork. I'm not sure I grasp it as a game concept, to be honest. Um, I will say that I love Sludge. Yes, I have looked at both of them to answer your question with a yes or a no, <laughs> apologies. Um, between the two, I think I, I, Sludge gets the nod from me. Um, but... Yeah, I, I do like them both very, very much. Very pretty games. Sadly, I don't, I don't have like that group of gamer friends that would just want to try that. I um, I got it's a lot of like jaded old hobbyists here and I don't understand like it's not everybody but it's just folks who just I play games workshop and nothing else you're like okay well would you even bother trying nope okay well then I will call you when I want to play AOS or something or 40k or but apparently not any other time good to know <laughs> Um, hey, Sean. Let's see, Warren, if they release an updated new old world, can you see it becoming the flagship fantasy game or will AOS still hold it, having so much lore into it? Well, I don't know. I could see, I could see it go either way, honestly. Because they also have just not, you know, we know the old world is coming, like, the, as far as, like, a reinvention of fantasy battles. 
but no idea what that looks like, how much they're going to support it, what they really want to do with it. We know they like the intellectual property because of Total War Warhammer. Um, but I, I, that whole announcement and since then, like, you know, trickle of previews and stuff, um, it has me as a consumer just being like, I don't know what you're expecting. Like, no. I don't cream my pants when I see the Warhammer Fantasy Battles logo. So that didn't get me excited. Show me what it looks like for you to support multiple fantasy settings. You know, show me some real information about how this is going to play out. And they just haven't yet. So, I mean, I'm just like, meh. Um... And to be honest, I'm not convinced they know what they want to do either. I think they just see money on the table, and they're like, well, we shouldn't move away from that too far, because Total War Warhammer is a very beloved thing. I'm like, well, yep. Um... I mean, I think it'll be the like Horus Heresy of the Fantasy line. Yeah, but here's the thing, Josh. Horus Heresy is becoming one of their main things. Like, I understand that it'll just be an ancillary game, but if you turn it and support it like it's a full mainline product, like they do 40K and AOS, they have not had competing intellectual properties in that same space. It's always been 40K, Fantasy Battles, and then here are some ancillary games, Necromunda, Mordheim, then they dropped Fantasy Battles and put AOS. And then they made ancillary games for that. Warcry. Uh, Underworlds, yeah, kind of thing. But the idea of bringing both Horus Heresy and Old World into the line of like... They're just expanding the number of constant games they're going to be releasing. They haven't done that before. Because even at its height, Horus Heresy was always like... Here's what our awkward stepsister company, Forge World, does, you know, <laughs> of a poorly defined relationship. Um, obviously, they, obviously, Games Workshop still owns them, but you know what I mean. So, there's just, there's a lot of room to explore. Um, have you seen the third party Marvel models? Nope. I have not, but interesting. I had some abandoned Prussians from <laughs> Unfinished 40k Project. That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, uh, with the grain, how was your wife's, wife's writing weekend? It went terrific. Thank you so much for asking. Um, yeah, we went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania the week of Adepticon, which is why I wasn't there. And we just had a, an absolutely wonderful time. Um, travel was absolutely brutal, unfortunately. <laughs> it just, I, the Des Moines airport out of Iowa, it's like airport, hair care, and tire center. Like, it's just the boonies. Uh, one time we accidentally walked from the parking lot to our gate. Like, literally, they had an open door to bypass security. We accidentally walked in, like Mr. Magoo. Um, it was fine. The travel was atrocious but we were fine there we got there and she got to meet her fans in real life and she was so excited so yeah but thank you for asking that makes my day um we got some great pictures and she got some great exposure luckily her next several uh book signings are going to be kind of Eh, maybe not Midwest, but at least drivable, right? You don't have to fly all the way to Florida or anything dumb. Um, Michael, hey, two plus just started getting AOS. Well, welcome. Uh, and collecting Hedonites. Any recommendations for some fun models to use? You know, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Michael. I do not know anything about Hedonites. Like... Florida isn't dumb. Um, I don't know anything about Hedonites. So if anyone in the chat has any useful tips for our new friend here, I would please, please drop them. If there's any models or units, I know that uh, 
competitively. They're probably not in like the best space, but you know, he's a new player. He's not looking to win Akon. <laughs> so, um, go ahead and, and help out a new friend. Just picking through, grabbing top knots. Vince for HH. I'm looking forward to Horse Heresy. Always put off by the resin and the prices. Yeah, it's, you know, um, laying my cards on the table. I'm actually meeting with another content creator this week to discuss a joint venture of tackling the Horse Heresy lore. Um, I like it. And, and here's why I like Horus Heresy, to be honest with you. It's why that announcement made me excited. I had to think about this. To me, 40k is a setting. All these stories can happen congruently. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, massive time and space differences. You got lots of aliens and all these kinds of things. But Horus Heresy is not necessarily just a setting. It's a story. And the difference between a setting and a story is a story takes you on a path. Um, a setting just is so like at its core the Horus Heresy is a civil war story of brothers fighting one another um, how that tears the Imperium apart and all these very climactic and dramatic things things that you don't necessarily have to touch on when it comes to 40k again it's the difference between a setting and a story so I'm very excited about it um, I have found it to be more interesting overall for some time <laughs> um yeah and so i'm excited to eventually talk about it whenever it does drop again i've never been a fan of um never been a fan of games workshops just like here's a random picture and call it a preview it's like that's not a preview uh, but I, I did appreciate that one. I was like, okay, I'm, my body is ready. Take me. Um, Doug, have you any got any recommendations for AOS audiobooks? Uh, I really, my favorite one that I've ever listened to was mainly, and this is just as much because of the uh, narrator as the story, but Neve Black Talon, First Mark. I enjoyed that quite a bit. It does get a little forest gumpy at one point when there's just a whole lot of running. But it is a good story. Um, hey Doug, what's your opinion on Skaven, lore-wise and in-game? Uh, lore-wise, 
I like them. I would like to see more discussion of them. Um, like in, in books and publications and stuff. For right now, it kind of just seems like... Eh, and also the rats are there too. And they have schemes. Okay. Um, it seems It seems like... They're, they've kind of become like beastmen in the sense of if we just need an enemy to just pop up here and for really any reason have a MacGuffin, you know, battle, who can we get? It's like beastmen and Skaven. Okay, cool. Because um, there's lots of stories where Skaven just pop up just because. Um, but I would love to see more stories where it's like, no, 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 we actually have a plan where you... Or maybe like a story of a, a location or forces that are like actively fighting Skaven for some amount of time. So we get to see like veterans of those wars opinions. Like I would be down for that. You know, the, for example, like here in the States, the veterans who fought World War One in Europe versus Japan ha had very different kinds of experiences. <laughs> um... And so, like, you know, giving us a sense of, like, what it's like to fight those guys could be really interesting uh, for a Black Library book. Um, what's everyone up to? Hey, hey, Brent, we're just chilling. Last question, how would you feel about playing Juggernaut in Spider-Foes? Oh, I had no problem with that. Yeah, no, I, uh, only reason I haven't bought a whole bunch more characters is just, uh, strictly money reasons. <laughs> but, uh, I have no, nothing against it. In fact, Juggernaut's one of my favorite minis, uh, that I've seen that they do. So I would love that. I painted <laughs> 80 grand, it was awful, yeah. Hey, Doug, any advice on selling painted armies? I'm running out of shelf space. Um, advice, take good pictures. Uh, I use eBay. I know not everyone's favorite thing. Um, I, I think one thing that's helpful and that I've kind of come to do is just decide what the money that you get for it is going to go to before you ever sell it. Like just get excited about something. And the reason I think that that's a worthwhile endeavor is because uh, otherwise you, it's easy to get remorse because you feel like you lost something. But in actuality, like, no, 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 you probably got something for it too. There's eBay, there's sites that buy armies that are painted, like Troll Trader or something like that. Um, I think Mind Taker Miniatures is in 
the states, depending on where you are, it might be easier to ship. I do like the look of Harlequins in 40k. A faction like that could work really well in AOS. Yeah, I guess we don't really have that now that they got rid of like war dancers or whatever they were. Alright, isn't that what the elfin things were called, war dancers? Sort of like a Harlequin equivalent. Hey, Pyromancer! What's up? But yes, the bone splitters do have nice bottom. They got cheeks for days. Gorka Morka looked upon all of his servants and said, Bring unto me the most dummy thick, and the bone splitters were born. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise Tyranids aren't an AOS. I'd be down for it. <laughs> I, I like them. If nothing else, just to see those models more, because you don't see them a lot in 40k, that's for sure. Hopefully their new book they're getting this week is uh, going to help that. What's the big beastie hiding off? Uh, I will show you in a second. That is, if you want to Google it, if you're at a point where you can, it's called the Hellbringer Drake for the game Conquest by Parabellum. It uh, is essentially a giant artillery piece for their dwarf faction. So, if you're talking AOS speak, just to stay on brand, <laughs> uh, imagine the Fire Slayers had a Magma Droth, but they uh, loaded two massive cannons firing magma on each side of it. And boom, there you go. Okay, last guy with the wood. Then I think I might be done. My eyes are tired today. Did a whole bunch of driving this morning and then came back and immediately hopped into this. Probably not a great idea. Probably should have relaxed a bit before, but. <laughs> uh, you're not a fan of Dwarves? I don't. I can't. I can't tell how to take that second one. <laughs> okay. Yes, Pyromancer here in the chat is the latest person that. I'm trying to drag down to the depths with me with Conquest. Sweet. Am I prepping for a Conquest journey? No, I don't know of any, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, maybe if I go to... Uh, Nova this year. I'll see if they are doing a conquest thing. So I'll show this model off here. Let me get my Oh, gotcha. No, 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 no. So this right here is called the Hellbringer Drake. So come on. Everything needs time to dry anyway. 
so yeah it's this big boss hog again they work at a different scale um so you have kind of a perch for the rider himself he's that guy he's you know you can see him here basically he's pointing forward he's like go there let me hit them with my sword so he's gonna stand up here there's actually a alternate model that's a hero option like a sorcerer so i'm gonna wait to glue him until i get the sorcerer in the mail and then magnetize him so i can switch back and forth and then each cannon has a guy you can sit right here and operate it and essentially they're kind of like praying into it to to get it to fire the magma which is a neat idea Boop, just like that so yeah it's it's got this total like mad max meets dwarves i don't know i like it plus this guy look at this i'm six foot three my hands are huge this guy he's thick <laughs> Um, you know, and then when you can, when you figure, here's a Stormcast model, it's pretty popular, you see that quite a bit. Here's a dwarf standing next to him, so like I said, he's almost as tall as a Stormcast. Obviously if he's standing upright, he's still head and shoulders above, but, yeah. Wasn't feeling the model until I saw the cannon operators. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty cool. But they got all kinds of cool factions. Uh, what's another one? Here, I got another fun do echo model. Give me one sec. Um, I have shaky hands and I'm worried about it. Oh, but I don't know what you mean, but I didn't mean to offend. <laughs> um, so let's see. We got these guys here. I'm just going to try and hold them up. So every year they do, uh, maybe it's every year. I'm not sure if it's every year. They'll do that. But they do these like models that are meant to be like a, a vignette almost. So like this is what you buy. It's a collector's edition. I think it's called the Eruption. And so you got a sorcerer on top who's creating a eruption of Earth. You have all different kinds of support units for him down here. And of course you can pop them off the base and these can be used on normal conquest stands as just generic heroes. So I still have some painting I wanna do on these ones just to make them a little extra nice but uh yeah they have these great centerpiece things if you're more of a model collector they look terrific and obviously um this guy the sorcerer there's a version of him that can stand up here so that's what i'm waiting for I collect 100 kingdoms, and I honestly didn't know uh, there was a dwarf faction. Oh, yep, that's the Dweg home. I like them. Yes, so really quick rundown. Um, dragons created dwarves in Conquest, and they're called dwarves. This is not just like a, a GWPR thing. Dwarves exist as well. What makes the difference between Dwarves and Dweghome, the faction that you can play, is that Dweghome have basically found a way to break the mental programming so they're no longer servants. So it's what you call this like divergent subspecies of Dwarf is Dweghome, and that's what their faction is. And I just like, that's so cool. <laughs> Joshua, yes, there is an undead faction. Uh, it comes out... I think their box is going on pre-order here pretty soon. Old Dominion is their undead. Essentially one of the gods merged with the power of death and all of his dead soldiers rose from the grave. I'll show you a picture here. They're pretty baller. Let's see. Come with me. So here's their cavalry, the cataphracti, the cataphractoi. Um... Let's see. So yeah, Old Dominion is what you want. They don't have everything for them yet. Like, 
they they basically how Paramedellum does stuff is in waves. So like the first wave of Wadroon stuff, I think was one month. It was like their basic infantry, and then the second wave, just so they don't, I think, um, overload their production. So let's take a look at their kits here because I don't think they have skeletons in the traditional sense that you were probably used to. Okay, so first we have these guys who are these creepy little scathe things. I don't know. They got like little billowing smoke at the bottom of them, but they have these haggard, nasty looking marred faces. I like that. Uh, what are you? So it's the same kit, dual build. This is one where they're wearing cloaks and robes. I, again, I, I haven't looked at the actual unit entries for this faction yet. I actually need to do a whole review video of them. Um, but yeah, and then here is their infantry, probably the closest thing to their skeleton warriors. But yeah, they did a great job with the, the rust effects, the patina, all that kind of thing. Um, and to answer your question in broad terms, one of the things that I, I, I do see a lot of discussion about is like the price differences between... Parabellum and 40k, Age of Sigmar, those kinds of things. The kits themselves are not terribly dissimilar in cost. What is a big difference is how far those kits go. Like, for example, um, you know, in a 1,000, 2,000, which are standard sizes for both games, this guy is close to 200 points. Um, so he's a tenth of an army. Whereas in 40k, this same thing would probably start very, very low on the point scale. So like the kits physically don't cost a terrible different amount, but how far they get you in terms of building an army is. And so when I look at these, yeah, they might be kind of cheap, but you're probably not going to need a ton of them. Like, to be honest, you're not going to need a lot of kits for this army. Um... Let's see, what else do they got? I'm gonna back out here. Like I said, I don't, uh, this is probably the faction I have the least about, but look at some of their heroes. I'll pull those up. This is one of my faves. What is this, the Hierophant? The Hiero Deacon. Yes. And so the, the sales pitch for this army is um, the god of mankind, who is a literal deity, went insane, merged with the powers of death, and anyone who was like completely and utterly dedicated to that deity, Haslia, was reawoken at, in, in undeath with all kinds of nastiness. And so their structure is it's a military structure because they were militant servants of the state, but their religious caste have the higher powers like more so than the military guard which is a super cool show the 100 kingdoms 2021 exclusive you know sometimes they keep let's see Oh, here's the limited series. Yeah. So showing off the uh, exclusive models. Um, so again, these are this is the human faction equivalent of uh, the Dweck Home thing I showed you. So these are models that can be used as knights in the game. But of course, this is the diorama base that he has. Um, this is so I the one the way home one that I have is old. This is the current one where it's basically a hold ray being carried aloft by his loyal <laughs> warrior servants. Uh, this is the spire one. And these are like flesh crafter golems, so he made it a snake lady, which is just rad. Hold on, that was a terrible picture. 
There we go. That's probably a better one. Yeah, pointing forward, got the spear in its arm. And no one can look at that and not be excited. Uh, that's so funny. And I'll do the Wadroon one because the Wadroon are awesome. I could just sit here and stare at their models all day. Okay, well, that didn't work out. Here it is. Queen on Raptor. So, they got some really cool stuff going on. I'm going to be talking more about um, Conquest here coming up soon because... If I'm honest with you, sometimes I get burned out at the drama surrounding Games Workshop. They can't breathe or fart without there being a whole bunch of internet hullabaloo about it. So... It's nice sometimes to have to dip into a game where it feels like the community is not constantly at the producer's throats. And it's a super fun as heck game. Uh, what else? Yeah, let's go back to Conquest. But yeah, that's what they got for right now. There's a few other things coming out. Oh yeah, here's the sorcerer that I'm going to put on my Hellbringer. So he's a mage that's being like held aloft and he's tied to the thing by chains. So I just need to magnetize the right points to be able to affix him to my dragon, but yeah. Honestly, why I stay away from the forums. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, I do feel like I should have some kind of beat on what's going on in AOS, but you know, when it comes into, like, the Adepticon stuff, man, I wasn't even there, but it just dominated all the stuff that I could see online. And when I realized how rude people were being to some of the folks who volunteered to run the event, I was like, man, this is just... It's just not what this hobby was supposed to be about. So... I don't know. I keep doing my AOS stuff. The game has definitely expanded beyond my scope of, of hobby. Like... I enjoy playing my bone splitters because they run forward and they die. That's it. But like, I don't know. AOS has just become so much different than what it was when I first started hobbying. So I still enjoy it. It's just different. I think there's better game systems in terms of companies supporting them. I mean, all the rules for Conquest are free. You want to go check it out? You can download everything. Have fun. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I just, I can't fathom people who spend this much time and energy and money on a hobby that they seem to hate. So, I don't know. My advice to you is just go find something you enjoy. And sometimes I just really enjoy other games. And then I always come back to AOS because I really like the setting. That's it. The character is involved. And if that's the most I engage with, I'm still a happy person. I'm still loving this channel. I got founded on lore. Lore will continue. So, that was the poetic rant and rave that... Um, None of you asked for, but you still got. <laughs> now, I will say, once they come out with a Cthulhu faction for Conquest, this entire channel is getting shut down and refamped into a Conquest uh, channel. <laughs> That's 100% a joke, but honestly, I, I have yet to see a company nail a Cthulhu aesthetic that I want. And so, if they can do it, I mean, supposedly there are there is like a sub... Not subterranean. It's like a uh, underwater faction. Submersible? I don't know. But yeah. Elrit, join us on Soulbound. Where do you guys play? Sign me up. Shoot me an email. If on, I mean, honestly, if you have a regular group and it can work with my setting, or my, my setting, my schedule, good God, in the contact me thing on my main page, my email's there. Shoot me one. Subnautical. Yes, thank you. Malifaux didn't. <laughs> uh, oh, Malifaux. Malifaux did have sort of a, a, a creepy um, Lovecraftian vibe. It really did. I honestly was just never in an area where Malifaux was popular. It was really popular in the Seattle area. And then something happened with that community. And like... Um, 
it, it was all dead. Like they had product on the shelf, but nobody was coming to the game nights. Like I missed, I, I just came after it. I don't know what I missed. No one could tell me, <laughs> but products on the shelf, nobody's playing it. And then I moved to Iowa and then nobody's playing it here either. And I can't really even find it. So it's like, I have no idea what happened to that game in the Ballard, Washington region, but it was decisive. <laughs> No, I know the fish gnomes aren't, uh, they're not a thing. There was some other one that was, this is like a year ago when I was in the Discord that someone mentioned it to me, but um, I'm thinking of something else. I'll have to go find it. I'll have it for the next stream. Give me a Castlevania faction and I'll buy it. There you go. That's all you need. See, gamers aren't complicated. <laughs> That would be a real pleasure, but we are French. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I might sour your party then. <laughs> I cast Arcane Bolt. What say you, Necromancer? And then the camera just pans to me. Omelette du fromage. <laughs> All right, I think I got to hop off. I uh, just felt my back pop in weird ways. Just got to go stand up and stretch a little bit. But friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I had a wonderful time. We got a good chunk of the pigs painted. I mean, at this point, it's just I have to go back over with all the bones and then the straps on their wrists. Um, and then I hope very, very soon to uh, be painting up Thickness Drake over here and uh, having a good time with that so thank you all so much for hanging out with me it was an awesome pleasure here i'll even show you my face here at the end thank you so much i always have a great time hanging out with you guys and it brightens my day because uh we were talking a lot about the adepticon stuff earlier and i've just noticed that whenever i get kind of down on what i'm perceiving as the community that's capital c like what you see online right all the gamers throwing their two cents in the pot um I feel like it's just incredibly refreshing to just hang out with people. You know, it's totally different here than it is elsewhere. So I'm very, very grateful for all of you for hanging out with me. So thank you so much. And I will catch you this week for more videos. Happy Wargaming, friends. <laughs>